let's go ahead and take a look at our next multiple or our first multiple answer. And multiple answer, when you see that, it's basically a, another way of writing it is just multiple, multiple choice. And what that's going to mean for these types of problems is that once we go through this, you're going to see there are four options for a possible answer for part A. There are going to be three options for possible answers for part B and three options for possible answers for part C. And you will choose one in here as like a multiple choice type thing. And then you'll choose one here and you'll choose one here. And so each part is its own multiple choice question. And since there are multiple parts, that's why we call it either multiple, multiple choice or multiple answer. I think you'll get the, the hang of it once we go through one of these. So let me erase my little notes here. Oops, let me erase all of them. And let's go through this problem. So it says a random sample of, I see 38 statistics students. So there's my sample size, 38. Were asked how many minutes they had exercised in the last 24 hours. So there's my variable how many minutes these students had exercised in the last 24 hours. So I have a continuous numerical variable. Uh, the responses are shown below. And even though time is continuous numerical because we measure it, you can see it's being reported discreetly, right? We're saying 30 minutes, four minutes, zero minutes. Nobody's saying like 0 0.7 minutes. So it's reported discreetly, which is fine. Um, I think looking through this, my favorite student is this one who worked one minute and said, or worked out one minute and said, uh, I'm good. Um, other things to take note of, just looking at the 38 data values, I see 189. That student worked out over three hours in the last day. That's a lot. So you can kind of imagine where you might fall on this. But if I look at my spread, I can see my spread is zero to 189. So the first direction says create a stem and leaf plot and describe the plot using your socks. So let's go take a look at the four options. We can create our own stem and leaf plot, but I wanna see what they have. So I see these two here and then these two here as we scroll. So I'm gonna try and get these two stem and leafs in frame, just so we can compare and contrast because we have this type versus this type. And let's see what is the difference between them. So if I look, the, the one on the bottom, this one here is a little bit longer and you can see because I have a stem of two with a gap, five with a gap, seven's got a gap, gaps here, gaps here, gap here, where you can see there are no gaps on this stem and leaf plot. And that's actually a problem because you can't just skip over a stem. Like you see it goes from one to three here. You're not allowed to just skip over two. You need to have that represented in your graph because that graph shows the gap, right? I can see the gap here, which is what I wanna see. I wanna take note that there were no students that reported working out in the 20s, right? No 20 to 29 minutes. So right out the gate, I can see that these two are not my answer. So let me go ahead and just cross those out. I'm definitely not gonna pick this one or this one. All right, and I, I'll just circle the one that's correct. So ultimately, if I look now, here's gonna be my graph, and let me erase all of my little scribbles here. All right, here's my graph, and I'm gonna assume that since I had a sample size of 38, right, it said 38 students, there should be 38 leaves. And we could go through and count them, but I'm gonna assume I've got the 38 leaves. I see my title, I see my key, that's looking good. So then I need to just see which socks are off. And, and just looking at this, they look pretty similar. I can see one says skewed left versus skewed right. So that, that's one way I could figure this out. I also see that there's a difference in the statement on the O's, right? One is saying, hey, there's three outliers. One is saying there's no outliers. And then the center and spread, they're pretty much the sim same here, right? One saying, that they're both saying the median's 30, the range is 189, and this one here has an extra piece of information that the mode is zero minutes. So it's it's your call. I, I think the simplest way to figure this out is to just compare the shapes, all right? And I, I can go through, and if I wanted to, I could figure out the outlier situation. That would also get me the solution, but let, let's just take a look. So if I kind of rotate my graph on its side and just make a little distribution here, like this, and I can see that as I move left to right, now keep in mind, you can't see this, but I've rotated this in my head. Um, this stems, they, these do increase, all right, as I move left to right, and you can see that the right tail is longer here, so it is skewed right, so that's gonna make this my answer. And if you were unclear on shape, 
Again, we could also go after this problem. Let me delete some of my notes here just so that we have some space. We could go after this problem and look at the difference in outliers. So if I were to put my data in my list, which I have it already, I'm going to go to that. I'm going to take a look at one of our stats and let's go get um, the safety zone and figure out some outliers. I'm going to use my calculator app because I'm on my iPad and I actually stored all of my data in here. And if you wanted to make a stem and leaf plot from hand, I would probably sort this. And keep in mind, if you hit stat and you go to either option two or three, you can sort your list. My stuff is an L1, let me go ahead and do that. And you can now see that my data is sorted, which is kind of nice, keeps everything in order. All right, but ultimately, if I wanna get my um, safety zone, I just, I need to go run one of our stats. So let's do that. All right, and so there are my stats. I'm gonna go copy those over onto my paper just so I have them for reference. Let's head back to that. So let me head over here and we'll just take some notes here that I had a min, let's get min, Q1, median, Q3, and our max going, just so we can see if we have any outliers. So this was, I believe, 0, 0, 30, 60, and 189, respectively, and the units on all of these would be minutes because we're looking at time in minutes. All right, let's go see if there were any outliers and that will confirm, and let me scroll back up, that'll confirm that this should be the answer. So I'm expecting that this should have three outliers, but let's let's officially find out. So if I find the IQR, it's gonna be Q3 minus Q1. So that's going to be 60 minus zero, which is 60. I'm gonna multiply that number by one and a half. So one and a half times 60 gives me 90. I'm gonna subtract 90 from Q1. I'm gonna add 90 to Q3. And let's see what we get here. This would be zero minus 90, which would be negative 90. This would be 60 plus 90, which would be 150. So here is my safety zone. All right, so if I take a look at my minimum, zero, it's in the safety zone, so I have no outliers on the low end. But if I look at my maximum, 189, you can see it's outside the safety zone. It's larger than 150, so 189 is definitely an outlier. By that same rationale, 180 would be an outlier, and so would 160. So I have three outliers, and they come at 160, 180, and 189 minutes. And that is consistent with what we had right over here. So again, this is my answer. Great, we got that one happening. Now let's take a look at parts B and C, and I'll scroll back up for this. And it says here, um, if the highest data point, the student who exercised for 189 minutes was mistakenly recorded as 1,890 minutes, which of the following statistics would change? excuse me, would be different and select all the statistics below. Select all the statistics listed below that would change. I can read my own words. So basically we're saying, what if instead of putting 189 in the calculator, you put 1890? What would that do to all of your stats? Well, let's go back. Let me take a look at my original data. Let me grab the mean and standard deviation. So I see 42 and 53. Let me write that down just so we have it for reference. All right, so let me head back here and remember that our mean here was, we just said it was, I believe, 42.97 and our standard deviation was 53.35. And again, this is off of my original data, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just copy this down to, let me scroll down to our answers for part B. So this is our original data, oops. All right, so there was no typos in this set. Okay, now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and into my list and I'm gonna change 189 to 1890. And then I'm gonna rerun one of our stats and let's see what changes. And you might be able to intuitively figure out what's gonna change. I don't mean this in a braggy way, but I, I, I can feel it in my bones, probably because I haven't done stats for a while, that if this changed to 1890, the mean's absolutely gonna change. The median won't. The standard, uh, excuse me, the IQRs won't because that that high outlier, right, that high point of 1890 is going to drag the mean way up. It's going to change the spacing between the data points, but it's not really going to change the spacing of anything in the middle, which is why these three will resist all of that. 
But if you don't get that intuitively, no problem, let's go crunch some numbers. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back into my calculator. Let's clear all of this out. I'm gonna head into L2 and I'm gonna go ahead and just say, hey, actually, can you go ahead and just define that as L1? And I wanna go down here and I wanna change this data point to 1890. And you might not even need to create a whole new list. I just felt like it. You might just go into L1 and change that data value to 1890. So let's go run one of our stats off of L2 this time. And when I do that, I can see that my mean changed, my standard deviation changed. But you can see that the min Q1, the median, and Q3 did not change. But I'm going to go ahead and just take some notes on my new um, stats off of this data set. So when I do the B version of the data, all right, so let's go ahead and write here that my mean was 87.73, my standard deviation was 303.998, my min was still zero, Q1 was still zero, the median was still 30, Q3 was still 60, but my max now was 1890. All right, so let's see which stats changed. Okay, so I'll go ahead and let me just erase my little highlights here so we can keep going with it. Okay, so in my original data, all right, my mean was 42.97, that changed to 87.3. So the mean should be one of my answers, okay? Let's take a look at the standard deviation that was originally 53.97. 35 that went to 303.998 that changed so I definitely want this one right and this one so I can already rule out this option and I can rule that out because it didn't have the word mean written in it which is a problem okay let's let's keep on going so my min well, actually my min's not one of the ones I'm interested in next one's the median so let's go look at the median was 30 minutes my median was 30 minutes, so I don't want to include that in an answer. So this is not the answer either. That gets me to this option. So the only two that are changing are my mean and my standard deviation. And just so we can follow that up, let's take a look, right? Q1 was zero, right? Q1 stayed zero, did not change. Q3 here was 60, Q3 here was 60, did not change, which also means your IQR wouldn't change. So this one didn't change, didn't change, didn't change. That's why those aren't the answers. Okay, all right, let's go see what they're asking us to change for part C. So for part C, it says, suppose each data point is converted from minutes to hours by dividing each data point by 60. And then let's select all of the stats here that would change, same list, okay? But let me go ahead and I'm gonna go back into my calculator and I'm gonna make a new list and we're gonna see what changes. So give me a moment to just undo my highlights here so we have them for this next one and I'm gonna divide every data value by 60 and see what changes. So let's go back into my calculator, go into my list. I'll define L3 to be L2, oh, L1, excuse me, divided by 60. So my original data set divided by 60, when I hit enter, it'll auto-populate and you can see all those decimals there. All right, let's go ahead and run one of our stats. So stat calc, and this time I'm gonna put in L3. All right, so there are my stats. Let me go ahead, take a look. My mean is 0.7, standard deviation is about 0.889, and there's my five numbers. Let me go ahead and write that over here. So on this data set, we have X bar, oops, let me write this out. X bar is 0.716. And again, these units are all minutes. This is gonna be 0.889. Let's see, min was still zero, Q1 was zero, oops. My median was 0.5, Q3 was 1, and my max in this case was 3.15. All right, let's see what changed. So did my mean change? My original mean was 42.97. It changed. So that should be in my answer. So I've got mean here, mean here. I can see this option is missing mean. This can't be my answer. All right, let's see if the standard deviation changed. We had 53.35 to 0.889, so that needs to be included, and it is in these two, which is fine. That doesn't really give me the answer yet, but I'll get there. The next one, it looks like I should check off. I'm gonna see if the median changed. So my original median was 30, my new median was 0.5. So yeah, the median should change, okay. All right, so now let's take a look at 
the quartiles. Let's go Q1. Because if I look at the these two options here, it looks like one has Q1 listed and one doesn't. So that's going to be the key. So let's look at our Q1. My original Q1 was zero and my new Q1 is still zero. So Q1 does not change. All right, that should not be listed. So by that rationale, this must be my answer. All right, and that's because Q3, if we just take a look at it, Q3, right, my original Q3 was 60. All right, Q3 here is one. So Q3 is gonna change, right? So that should be included and it is. And then let's look at our IQR, my original IQR, was 60 minus zero, which is 60. And my new IQR is one minus zero, which is one. So that does change, which is great. So that's included in the list. So that makes that my answer. All right. And that's the end to number three. Thanks so much, everyone. Bye.